When Apple introduced the notch, it was a way to fit the true depth camera system and the front facing camera without the display becoming an issue for those cameras. But also Apple's way of getting into the all screen game for the iPhone back with the iPhone 10 in 2017. It's been nearly five years now and we finally have a new iteration of that all screen display. We've actually been predicting the pill shaped cutout for the true depth and the hole shaped cutout for the camera uh, for quite a while now. But what we weren't expecting was Apple's new dynamic island feature, which came to fruition relatively recently in the rumor mill. But then when Apple actually announced this new cutout and the software functionality behind it that they dubbed dynamic island, we were still really surprised to see what exactly it was capable of doing because there were so many things that you, we just were not expecting. So what is dynamic island? Well, let's just say only Apple is a company that can name a camera cutout something so intense, but also they're one of the few companies that I believe uh, actually put the time and effort to make something that is supposed to just genuinely be dead space in an iPhone be useful and non-obtrusive. With a combination of hardware and software, the dynamic island can morph into different shapes and sizes for things such as incoming phone calls, alerts, notifications, face ID, authentication, timers, turn-by-turn -turn navigation, and just so much more. Now, the pill shape cutout actually takes up even less space than the traditional notch that was on the iPhone 13 Pro models. And as we all know, uh, the notch really served no purpose other than allowing you to use your front-facing camera and the TrueDepth camera system and some of the sensors that were kind of tucked in that area for face ID. Here, Apple gives us a different look, slightly more screen real estate, sure, but also made this literal black hole of dead space into something useful. It's also just not limited to notifications or alerts, but also ongoing activities like directions in the Maps app, uh, music that might be going on. You can see album art. Uh, you can see how much is left in your timer. They remain visible here at the top and they're interactive. You can tap on it to launch the app. You can swipe for different functions or you can long press on certain apps for uh, bringing up a more widget style display of information. Like what you would see with the album art, you can long press and get into kind of the music player for that. Apple's new live activities feature that will launch with iOS 16 will also be used in this dynamic island area, which could be pretty cool. Live activities were limited to the lock screen, so you could get information like sports scores or Uber ride estimated time of arrivals and directions and whatever you might get from the Uber app. Um, you can get that directly on your lock screen in real time without having to interact with your device. Now, let's say you're using your iPhone and browsing the web and waiting for your ride to pick you up. Well, now there's the dynamic island, which will come in handy and let you know that useful information that you would get uh, if you had your phone off and were looking at the live activities on your lock screen. You now get that here at the top while you're interacting with your device. Apple had to re-engineer the proximity sensor in order to achieve this feature. So it's not just as easy as, you know, moving some of the things and kind of reducing the footprint. They had to do things to actually make this happen. And so the company had to get the proximity sensor to detect light from behind the display in order to save additional space and also reduce the true depth camera system by over 30%. So that's why it's even smaller. Some early hands-on footage have even depicted that it's very responsive and very fluid, especially with Apple apps and functions, which makes sense since Apple has been working on this for quite some time now. But the best part is this isn't going to be limited to system functions or Apple apps. Developers will also be able to get their hands and update their apps to take advantage of dynamic island if they choose to do so. I hope developers have actually already been having the chance to work on this under embargo, I'm guessing, so that we can get day one updates, but it's still great to see Apple open this feature up for other users to use. If you're wondering why I'm so surprised about all of this and why many people were surprised about all of this is because I was expecting very minor software functionality out of this pill shaped area when the reports late last week about the pill and hole punch kind of being one long cutout via software at all times so that it was more uniform. And there were some, you know, mixed reactions about that. And I had mixed reactions too. And it was gonna, you know, display some things like, you know, when your light goes on for the microphone, letting you know that the microphone and the video is active, you get that different light there. That's the, the depiction that we thought was gonna happen. We did not expect something like Dynamic Island to have all this useful functionality behind just this little cutout area. But of course, it was a great surprise for me. I wanna know from you, was it surprising? Do you think it's worth it? I know it was kind of the star of the show. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about Apple's new, and hopefully I don't have to say Dynamic Island all too often, but 
I do kind of like saying it. What do you think about Dynamic Island? Let me know in those comments down below. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.